What's up guys, today I'm going to be talking a bit about my favourite watch currently in my collection. This isn't my favourite watch, but this is within the same line of watches as my favourite watch. This is a Citizen Grand Touring Classic, and this is a watch that I've had probably for over a year now. In my opinion, it's one of the best value dress type watches that you can currently get for around the $500 mark. I mean, these are quite easy to, to be able to buy for even less than that. Personally, if I'm not mistaken, I paid just under $400 for this one, and it was new. So it's definitely a very, very good looking watch. I mean, just look at those highly polished, highly raised indices and how the the bezel, the, the, the kind of bevel of the crystal just gives an extra touch of depth to, these, to this already quite deep looking dial because of that sunburst effect with this black going to charcoal, going to grey colour that the face of this watch has. I mean it's just gorgeous, it's just a beautiful, beautiful dress watch. Obviously you wouldn't wear it necessarily as a dress watch on this NATO strap, however this is the NATO strap that did come with my favourite watch which I'll show you in a few minutes. Something I really like on this watch is how they put the calendar in the same colour as the, as the dial, in black, so it doesn't distract, it doesn't take away from the simplicity of this design. I think it's perfect, had it been white I think it would have really thrown off the balance of the design of this dial. Also I really like the highly polished hands for the minute and the second, I love I love the design of the seconds hand on this watch. I just think it's gorgeous, beautiful. And obviously, this being a Citizen watch, it has a Miota a 9012 automatic movement. It's quite thin, which is another very big plus for this watch because it's a 44 millimeter watch, if I'm not mistaken. So it could be a maybe uncomfortable to wear had it not been for the fact that it is quite a slim watch. So it definitely fits in the the cuff with no problem or at least that's what I found by wearing it. Now obviously one of the first things with these watches that you'll notice is the crown guard. I mean the crown guard in my opinion is either a love it or hate it situation. I've seen a lot of people who say that this would be a perfect watch had it not been for that crown guard but personally I love it. Personally, I think it just adds so much character to this watch with that Omega Plo Prof style crown guard. And I also like the fact that it's highly polished off at the edges and it's rounded off at the corners so it doesn't bite into your wrist, it's not uncomfortable to wear. And it's just simple because I've seen this kind of, of, of crown guards made in many different ways and it, on many different watches I've owned myself. You've got obviously the Russian diver style watches where there's a chain attached to the crown guard and that in my opinion is just a, a bit ridiculous. You also have watches like um, ones that have been in my own collection such as the um, Hamilton, Hamilton Navy Khaki uh, watch that is uh, a watch that has a very very big crown guard stuck together with a type of mechanism that allows you to unscrew it and put it back together but it's just too big. I mean it goes with that watch, it doesn't look bad but it's just a pointless utensil, whereas I think this is actually, it actually has a, a, a purpose, it actually serves a purpose on this watch, besides just the aesthetic. And also I really like how easy it is to just be able to get to that crown. Now, this version of the watch doesn't have a screw down crown, however, the other one that I'm about to show you does. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's not many, many more things I can say about this watch, Citizen Grand Touring Classic. For the value, I mean, for the quality of the construction, the highly polished edges, the refinement, the sapphire crystal with that beautiful application of anti-reflective coating, which just in certain angle makes it seems, it makes it seem like there's not even any crystal there. It makes it seem like you could just go right in and touch the dial of this watch. I mean, I just think it's excellent, excellent value for money for an everyday watch, for a watch that can be used both casually depending on the strap you've got it on, as well as in a more formal occasion because this also comes in a steel bracelet version so that definitely makes it a fit for purpose business attire watch as well. Now to get this out of the way and move on to what is currently my favourite watch, I have to first let you know that I've had my favourite watch which is the Citizen Grand Touring Sport. I've owned it three times. 
and this is the third time that I've bought this watch. The other two previous instances were in the black and gold version of this watch, which is also very, very good looking. And I sold it both times. And the reason I sold it was because I really wanted the blue version. I don't really like gold watches or watches with any gold in them at all. So um, I really wanted to get the blue dial version, but they're very hard to get. I mean, these watches are not easy to pick up on the used market because they stopped producing them in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so they're not the easiest watches to pick up used. And for the price that they go for new sometimes, it's just not worth it because sometimes they're well over $1,000 new, whereas you can pick these up used for about $500, even for the Citizen Grand Touring Sport version. Now the movement on this watch is also very, very nice. They have a personalized rotor that is used for the Grand Touring line of watches by Citizen, which adds a, an extra level of balance to this movement because it takes away a lot of the necessary weight that the old rotor has on the Miyota M9012. Now this movement is extremely accurate. It typically runs around three plus per day, three seconds plus per day. So it's definitely very, very accurate, especially for the price. Uh, you'll notice this bezel, it has a difference between a highly polished surface and also a grippy type uh, surface to be able to actually uh, use it without any kind of problem. There are people who think that it would have looked better had it just had the same um, indices, the same uh, grippy texture all across the bezel. However, I think that by putting those spots of polished surface in the bezel, they bring this up to being a watch that can also be used in a formal occasion and not just a sport watch. I think it adds an extra level of sophistication, of refinement to this piece. Now, as you can see, this is on the stainless steel bracelet, which is an excellent, excellent quality bracelet. It's probably the best bracelet on a watch of this value that I've seen. I mean, in my opinion, you can't really go wrong with a bracelets from the Citizen Grand Touring line because they're just so well built, so comfortable, and they're also quite attractive. They have four different centerpieces, as you can see, and you can notice that the lugs kind of taper off, and they have kind of a, a Seiko Paddy-esque st style at the ends. It kind of looks like, like the base of a, of a Seiko Paddy diver watch. And I really like how they've done that because these are really big watches, obviously. You can tell here the difference in the size of the dial between the Classic and the Sport. The Classic, obviously, having more dial real estate because they don't have any bezel. But the fact that they've curved those lugs down and they've kind of rounded off the shape of the case makes for this a very comfortable watch. Now, looking at uh, the dial in close uh, detail, you can see the highly polished indices, similar to the ones in the classic version. But you can also see this dial, which is sunburst, but it also has kind of this matte look to it. So depending on the light, it either looks completely matte and completely solid, or it starts shifting in colors and then in the depth of that blue that royal navy blue which is just gorgeous i love how it plays also with that minute's hand in orange it just gives it a very nautical type of look and i really like what they've done with the calendar they've gone for the opposite route of the citizen grand touring classic and they've decided to make it a centerpiece for this watch by framing it now this is the previous iteration of the citizen grand touring sport that i owned last year as you can see, it's also a very nice watch. However, just the gold isn't personally for me. I think this blue version is definitely more my style, but there are definitely both excellent, excellent watches. Now, the AR coating on this watch is probably the best of any watch I've had. It's just amazing. I mean, it, it literally looks like there's no crystal there in most angles. It looks like there's no glass at all. It's incredible. It's incredible how they've made this, this crystal be so anti-reflective also the crystal is very high quality sapphire crystal obviously and it just adds so much to that depth that, that is given to this dial and obviously citizen could afford the depth because of how high that bezel is had that bezel not been so tall to be able to sit the crystal on the top they wouldn't have been able to get this effect of just making it seem like that like that dial is just meters away from the crystal it's just a gorgeous beautiful watch and one of the things that i've noticed with the citizen grand touring sport and the citizen grand touring classic is that not many people know about them 
very few people talk about these watches very few reviews about them on on youtube uh, people don't really seem to have paid that much attention to these watches and i don't really understand why i mean the the, the main thing i could think about is that maybe it's just too big for most people because obviously these watches don't come in any smaller sizes i think probably if these watches also came in 40 millimeters these would have been probably one of the best selling watches of the year when they came out similar to what happened with the christopher ward a c60 pro trident a version of their dive watch which became one of the most successful um, watches of any micro brand in the year it was released and one of the main complaints even even with that watch was the fact that they didn't offer different sizes up until recently and now that they do I think a lot more people have started uh, accessing these watches that before were considered just too big for their wrists and definitely with a watch like this one like the Citizen Grand in Sport it's definitely a, a big amount of real estate that is being occupied by this watch especially because of the crown guard but also just in width i mean this isn't exactly the slimmest watch in the world this is definitely a very thick watch however once again this isn't a watch that is in the same league as a gauntly watches like the the, the invicta a diver watches it looks like you're wearing a a, a, a plate a bowl a pasta bowl on, on on your wrist i think that this is definitely wearable and i think for people who have for example the same wrist size or bigger than mine uh, my wrists are 7.1 inches i think this is perfectly wearable i think this is this, there's absolutely no problem with this watch for people with that wrist size if you're below seven inches in the wrist then yes maybe it's not the watch for you but i mean the fact that these watches haven't been reviewed that much even if just to talk about the quality and the detail and the just the value for money that you get with these watches i really don't understand why and obviously these watches now uh, they've stopped being produced and citizen seems to have gone more towards refining their a uh, solar power and their quartz movements than making more high-end automatic pieces i think that maybe we're going to be looking at a bit of time until we get another watch as good as this for an automatic offering from citizen because personally and this is obviously coming from a point of view in which as i said from the start of this video this is currently my favorite watch in my collection i have watches that cost four times what this one does but i think this one is not just in terms of the design which i love which once again it could be a love it or hate it thing i love it but also in terms of the value for money you're getting with this watch uh, you can pick this watch up new for seven hundred dollars and below and you can pick it up on the used market with a very minor uh, uh, scratches very minor marks um for even below five hundred dollars i mean what other watch gives you this kind of quality for that price point i, I personally can't think of any i can't think of any and now one thing that you will notice in this bracelet is that for some reason there's a bit of a gap between the bracelet and the case this wasn't the case in the two previous citizen grand tourings that i had i'm not sure what happened with this bracelet it may have been a, a, a an issue with the guy removing it and not using the proper tools or not using the proper technique and maybe widening the flaps between the bracelet and the connector part for the link I think that's probably it because in none of their previous Citizen Grand Touring reviews or watches that I've owned myself have I seen this gap and obviously I got this watch with the NATO strap on which obviously means that the owner took the bracelet off which personally I wouldn't do I mean there's no reason why I would want to swap this bracelet for anything else even though it did look really good in that NATO strap which had the same colors as the dial but I think this is definitely a steel bracelet kind of watch I mean this is just it, it, it's just too big and too heavy of a watch to wear on anything else maybe you could get away with a really thick leather strap but uh, outside of that i think it's just too heavy for a nato um so yeah i mean at the moment this is probably my favorite purchase of this year i was able to pick this up if i'm not mistaken for under 500 dollars just around 450 and it came uh, with all this box uh, warranty card information it does have a bit of of scratches a bit of uh, scratches on the vessel and those do come down to two things first of all the metal on these watches is really soft and it's highly polished in many places 
So this does mean that you are going to attract a lot of scratches, as you can tell on this one. However, that's not an issue because I knew that even if I was to buy this watch new, within two or three months it would have the same amount of scratches as it currently has, which is once again just due, due to the nature of the of the metal use and the and the finishing of the metal. Uh, another thing that I think is mainly uh, mainly just uh, uh, an opinion based on the fact that I, I would be perfectly willing to pay more for this watch if they had a few changes. But probably the only thing that I would change is the material of the bezel insert. This one obviously is aluminum and it does scratch really easily. The two previous Citizen Grand Touring Sports that I had it had scratch bezels and once they scratch you can see the undercolor of the paint which is silver so it kind of takes away from that kind of elegant look of this watch. It, I would have loved, I would have loved, I literally would have paid twice as much as the new asking price for this watch if it had a ceramic bezel. I mean, if this watch had a ceramic bezel, I could easily say this is the perfect watch for the money it costs. Uh, so yeah, it's unfortunate that now with this watch not being produced anymore, we're not going to see any kind of updates uh, to, to the design or any kind of improvements to the materials used. But yeah, I mean, in terms of watches that not many people know about and that just offer you, in my opinion, unbeatable value for money, the Citizen Grand Touring Sport and the Citizen Grand Touring Classic are a line of watches that are unparalleled, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, this was just an opportunity to show you guys this watch, which I'm so happy with having this back in my collection. It took me almost a year to find it at the price I wanted to pay for it. it I did manage to make a profit on the two previous times that I bought and sold this watch, because there are a few people who know about this watch and are always on the lookout for a watch that is being posted in a good condition for a good price in the used market. So these watches do sell really, really easily. It's just a matter of having patience if you want to pick one up on the used market and just a, a wanting, a, a, if you want the new version, just to look for the best alternatives, because there is quite a big difference in prices from one place to another if you're going to go new. Anyways, guys, hope you liked the review. Till the next time, peace.